Alan, I think it's your turn to take the minutes. Is that okay with you? I think so, yep. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, Jim and Bob, do you know everyone? Do you, or do you want introductions or no? No, I'm, I'm good, Donna. Okay. I know everybody. Okay, okay, okay. Um, well, I'm, I think I'm going to stay with the agenda as it's written because uh, I don't think it will take us long to approve our minutes from November 21st. Um, do I have a motion? So, okay. I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? Good job. Yes. Okay. Yes. Good job. Um, thanks, Allison. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Right. Super. Um, so, we have um, an application to review uh, for CPA funding from the library for uh, repair to the front steps. Um, has everybody on the Historical Commission had a chance to look at it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, so let's see. Um, why don't I just open it up for questions <laughs> for Bob and, and Jim? Okay. If you oh, like, Donna, I, I can give an overview of the project if that would be of any help to you. Well, I think we will want to do that, but I think it might be helpful for you to hear the kinds of questions people have, okay. if that's okay. Yep. Um, I'm just curious whether Bob got my, my email about the CPC in there. I did, indeed, yep. yep. And, and someone will be there that was supposed to be the night of our January um, trustees meeting, so we'll do some juggling. Um, the okay. meeting's at five, five o'clock, correct? Right. Okay, so we might be able just to push our meeting to 30 and and hopefully- We can be done. see that you go first. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, I guess uh, no one else has questions. Um, my, uh, I have a kind of a, a sort of broad question, broader than the proposal. Um, it, in order to be eligible for CPA funding, um, the work has to be historic preservation. It can't be repair. And that's not always clear, the distinction. Um, but, um, and uh, I think, Jim, it will be helpful to have an overview because, you know, you didn't send us photographs of what you intended to, to uh, repair and whatnot. But my larger question is, I went and stood in front of the library for a while yesterday and really looked at the facade. And, um, and I looked at the brick uh, low walls to either side of the front um, porch, as it were, um, which look like they've had some amateur mortar repair, maybe some bricks have been replaced. Um, and actually, I really looked for the first time at those nice um, decorative cornices um, with the Greek keys, which I don't think I'd ever looked at before, and I was glad they were all in good repair. But but it, it all made me, and then this is a bit of a sidebar, but I looked at the wooden handicapped accessibility ramp and thought, I know it's semi-permanent, but it kind of doesn't have anything to do with the building. I wondered, I guess I wondered if you have taken a larger view of the front of the library and thought, should we have someone who really knows about historic preservation come and look at it and think of everything that we ought to do to keep this in good repair and really in the state that it was in 70 years ago, which is, which is the point you know, of historic preservation. So this is really different from the accessibility grant that you had um, where the building had to qualify for uh, historic preservation work, but the work was was really to make the building um, available to everybody. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'll I'll, I mean, I'll let uh, Jim do the talking because Jim and, and Bob Klinger really were spearheading this project. But I mean, the the short answer to your question is uh, no. We haven't looked at the you know in that same light that you just um, that you just said. I mean, frankly, what we tried to do is we tried to, to 
you know, beat this deadline of December 13th. Uh, and it's really difficult, as I said in my letter to you, it's really difficult to get contractors to respond. Uh, I don't know why, but it just is. And I know my son is one and, and um, we try to teach him to try to respond to everybody, but that's not always what's, what happens. So um, we wanted to try to get in on this round of funding as a start, but you know, we're, we're here to learn from you and, and um, amend as necessary or, or whatever your suggestions tend to move us toward. Jim? Would you like, okay, get that place. Sorry about the phone call here, hang on. Okay. Um, the, the broad overlook on, on this project is that we have observed deterioration of the concrete base under the portico for several years now. About eight years ago, a good chunk of step spalled off right by the handrails. Uh, a mason was hired and they repaired it um, with hydraulic cement. Did a beautiful job, you can barely see it, but it's held together quite nicely. Um, the deterioration is, is a naturally occurring event. Uh, we have a, a northwesterly exposure and the elements have been beating on that concrete for 72 years. And it's not unusual to speak and to see that the concrete begins to deteriorate. I made two repairs to the left of the um, handrails one about four years ago, and that is held together well. Uh, and I just repaired it again, another area adjacent to it uh, this summer, and that's held together quite well. They look awful. They don't blend in at all with the historic look of that building, but they did stop the deterioration of those steps. So it was on my recommendation to our chairman that we get the advice of a mason, which we have done, and what this process is, is a, um, I'm just going to, a couple of sentences here. It's a fast setting, multi-purpose, cement-based, fiber reinforced, high strength and water resistant material that may be used to patch, repair and resurface concrete surfaces. Um, I've had some experience with the product. It does work quite well. Uh, it's troweled on. After, well, the, the, the whole area is power washed first. It's, it has to be cleaned. And then it is, it is uh, an adhesive is applied. And then it is troweled on. They come in 50 pound bags and it's, it's a mixture. They put it on with a trowel across the whole surface, the, the, the landing, the steps, everything. Um, and, uh, and it takes, uh, it'll, it'll dry up in, in two to four hours. You can't put traffic on it probably for 12 hours, but it's recommended 24 hours. Now, just a point on the handicap ramp, as you know, that extends over the portico concrete. So the elevation is correct for the slope of the ramp in the front door of the building. That will be temporarily removed and set aside. So the product will be going underneath that and then it will be placed back in place. Um, the product can be different shade could be color coded. I don't know what color this will come out, but you can make it look like it, it did 72 years ago. It probably a concrete color. So um, that was my solution. Uh, the steps are not gonna get any better unless we do something. And uh, this is what we're applying for. Oh, I just wanted to make one further comment. The distinction between the uh, repair and preservation, I would make the case that the work I have done is the repair piece and the mason before me. I'm not a mason. That, that was the repair because it was, it was needed to be put back together. The, the renovation piece of the puzzle is what I've just explained to you with applying this cement coating to the, to the steps. That's, that's any questions for me? There was some mention of the columns in the proposal. Is, is work planned on those? 
No, not the columns, Judy. We're not doing anything okay. on the columns. Keith has actually caulked the top of those columns. Uh, he does that every year, and he's just maybe done I, it. Maybe I misread it. It's a while ago since I read it. Um, did did either of you look at the? I, I think I sent um, to Bob um, last month this the Secretary of the Interior's uh, standards, which has a section on masonry in it. Did did you look at that enough to be sure that the the strategy you're considering meets those standards? And, and I'm asking this because it is it is a genuine requirement. <laughs> no, right. No. Um, are you you talking about? I can't remember what the. I took a photo of it just now, to be sure. Um, the preservation briefs. The preservation but, briefs. No, I no. said there was there was one on concrete repair there, which I think was probably would get more, in more detail. Okay, but, but, but the actual. Was, sorry, right. Jerry. Jerry. Well, there is that. I was talking about the actual Secretary of the Interior standards, which is a long document, and I, I sent it to you about a month ago, Bob, when you first asked, after you first asked Alan, and that has a section on masonry work in it, that, and, and, your, and your proposal should refer to that. Okay, I, I, I'd have to look back to see. I don't remember that, and usually I'm pretty good about that. But I'll I can I can look back if that was back yeah. in November or whatever. I can well, look back. I, I mean, I, I, I don't I don't mean to make a secret of it because we can send it to you both again. Um, Would you, do that? you at least got the email because you wrote back in. I think it was the email where I said here are here are our December or November and December meeting dates, yep. and you okay. wrote back right away and said we'll come to the December meeting. Um, so what about my question about the side supporting walls? The, uh, the Mason, Richard Cooper Masonry uh, out of Holyoke, the Mason is aware of those um, short supporting brick structures uh, and repointing is part of his um, proposal to us. I thought you. I thought with the proposal you said you had nothing yet from a mason. Oh no, we have. We have uh, the proposal from one mason. We did not. We contacted three different masons, and <laughs> only one responded. Um, I'm not sure if the other two came out. I know that this one did and responded to us, um, and um, that's what we were we were going on because that's the the uh, the only concrete. Pardon the pun. The only concrete thing we had to go by. I think it's fair to say that the CPC, I'm I'm on the CPC too, um, has historically accepted revisions to to numbers when when they can be justified. So so you shouldn't. It's helpful to have as much advance warning of those as possible, but. You feel, shouldn't feel absolutely locked into that initial number. You met the deadline. You got it in. I just I, I wanted to meet the deadline so that that gave us. No, I understand. Ability. And um, we are working. The, the problem, of course, is that it's the holiday season, and Bob Klinger is probably floating on a boat somewhere in the Caribbean right now. So it's very difficult to get all the pieces to come together. Sure. And that schedule. I apologize sure. for that. No, you're not the first to face this problem, so don't worry about it. Okay, thank you. Um, but it would be very useful if you have to send us what you have from Rich Cooper. Okay. Which, it sounds like that give, would give us a better idea of the scope of the work. Okay. We also, uh, yeah. yeah. We also uh, are concerned with, with uh, a couple of other things, one of which is um, because of the nature of, of uh, the use of those steps, we have to heavily salt and sand um, constantly, uh, which of course adds to the deterioration. And um, Bob, when he returns, Bob Klinger, when he returns, is uh, going to discuss, the, uh, he has already discussed that issue with um, uh, Rich Cooper and, and um, was assured that this material will stand up to um, salt and, and sand the way we have to salt and sand those steps. 
Um, the second thing was um, Bob, I asked Bob Halla, who has a lot of experience having worked at Coles Lumber with these kinds of materials. I asked him to take a look and uh, he, his concern was that he wanted to be sure that the product, which is called Universal 1023, um, stands up to um, Northeast environment, um, Northeast winters, Northeast cold. Uh, and um, Bob, when he returns, is going to get us the answer to that. So we are we're at work on this, uh, even though we have one um, estimate from a, a, a Mason, we're still looking uh, deeper. And as Judy suggested, it, it may, um, you know, it may affect what we what we ultimately have to ask for. So so um, what. Uh what the CPC has done with some other projects. Um, Jim is familiar with this because of the Veterans Memorial Grant. Even before we got into this inflationary environment, um, this isn't always the case, but the CPC has sometimes added a, an increment just you know, because um, we don't have any precedent for, we don't actually have any mechanism for providing more money than the grant <laughs> that was approved. Sure. So um, the, the trustees are fortunate in that they have probably deeper pockets than some of yes, the applicants. Yes, but, yes, but I mean. A contingency yeah. might still be a good idea. Right. Well, right. If there's, there's one thing that we learned about contingencies that of course occurred on the lift project because all it takes is the discovery of one little thing. Um, mm -hmm. and I mean that affected that affected the lift project by over eleven thousand dollars because it had to be moved three inches to the east um, because they they discovered a beam which could not be sawed into because it supports the front of the library and then, so the whole project had to be literally moved three inches and that was an eleven thousand dollar move. I, I've forgotten um, when you when you made that proposal. Um, Margot Jones and her folks put together some materials that were, um, how much of the original drawings do you have available to you? I mean. Oh, I would assume we have all of, we have all of them. You have all of them? You have all of them? Yep. Yep. You um, might, might just run this material by George Dole and see if he feels it meets the secretary's standards. He's, he's okay. well first in this sort of stuff. Okay, that's not a problem. I have a good relationship with George. I, I can talk with him. Yeah, he's, he's a good guy. Um, other questions? So I think, um, let me, uh, I think that the Historical Commission, um, my thought is that we should not vote on eligibility today because we don't have the information that we need in order to do our job about, um, particularly about this business of meeting the Secretary's standards. And also because I'm interested in the scope of the proposal. It seems to me if, if you're going to do the work, unless it's going to make it cost, you know, $100,000 doing it all right, would be would be a great thing to do in getting it done. Um, so I guess the question is, you're going to the CPC in January. I think we could say we don't know anything at this point that would yeah. necessarily disqualify it. No, no, agreed, agreed. Um, by when really... do we have to? By when do we have to decide what's the CPC deadline? Uh, well, I. The CPC application deadline was December 13th and their next day they've asked us to come to the January 11th meeting. They will probably make final decisions in March, but I think they would like to have sort of a preliminary feel by their February meeting. I was thinking February that we really, I mean, we, we should be having final discussions in February, not, not beginning discussions yeah. in February. Um, so we Susan, should decide. Susan, do you have a new family member with you there? <laughs> she's mad because I didn't feed her before getting on this call. So she's been climbing me constantly. I see. I see. You see, I see. me reaching over. It's... This thing I knew you lived with dogs. 
Well, <laughs> we, we now have one dog and one cat, courtesy yes. of my daughter who had to give us this one. I see. So, um, do you think do you think that this can come together during the month of January? Well, if uh, if you would do me one favor and simply uh, send an email to me indicating exactly what else you want us to provide you. Um, then we'll do it. We'll use that as a checklist and we'll go step by step by step and we'll do the very best we can. Um, mm -hmm. When is your January meeting? We're always the third Monday. The third Monday. Okay. Yeah. Really Martin Luther King Day. Which is often a holiday, but none of us, um, I mean, federal holidays are just another day. <laughs> so. Hey, Jim, you think we can, uh, if we get that list, we can tackle it for January 15th or whatever it is around there? I don't see a problem with that, Bob. Okay, okay. We'd be happy to do that. Okay, great, great. All right, shall we let Jim and Bob go? I think that list would also satisfy, go a long way to this answering the CPC's questions too. It's essentially the same information. Sure, sure. okay. Um, which and that meeting is earlier. That meeting is the second, January eleventh, yeah. right? Okay, we'll get on it. All right, good, good. good. Thank you. Very good, night, ladies and gentlemen. Happy okay. holidays. Happy Thanks. holidays. Bye bye. Okay. Well. Well done, Donna. Thank you. <laughs> it does seem like a poor line situation, but we do. Can we send you our thoughts about what might be included on a list for them? That would be super. Unless you want to just talk for a minute now. I'd like to organize uh, my thoughts and I'll send them to you. Okay. Okay. Um, I was thinking this is entirely anecdotal, but uh, two houses ago, we owned a house that was built um, just before the war, late 30s, and it had a concrete front entrance. And before, so when we owned it, it was about 60 years old. Um, and before we enclosed that to make a nice screened porch, it, it was it was a bigger footprint than the landing of the library. It was just rectangular or a differently shaped rectangle, um, we found that the concrete was so deteriorated that we actually had it broken up, you know, with a jackhammer and re-poured it. And I have, I am not a builder, but I have wondered if, if I mean, it, it seems to me- play one on TV. <laughs> but I play one on TV, stayed in a Holiday Inn Express, mm -hmm. exactly. <laughs> you could. I don't do any of these things, but I paid someone to do almost any one of them. <laughs> one house or the other. Um, I, I um, well, I think we can come up with a bunch of questions that'll be, I think, useful for them to think about, and then um, informative for our committee and the next committee. Yeah, I just about doing something that is lasting, um, which is, yeah, okay. Um, so. Um, I have one other piece of business if, uh, but does anyone else have another piece of business and I'll save mine. Not here, no. Okay, mine is very small. After I sent the agenda out for this meeting, Brian Dominus sent his annual call for budget requests, which are due, um, I think on the 10th of January, I was sort of amused because um, I think, I don't know how many committees meet, <laughs> we'll be meeting over Christmas week. You know? um, this committee's budget, as you may remember from last year is $200 a year. And it has been $200 a year for at least 13 years. I know because I went back and looked at the first copy of the town report that I had. So it probably has been $200 for, I don't know how many years. Um, I was on the committee. Yeah. And you and you you are about thirty years on this committee, aren't you? Oh, I hope not. <laughs> okay. Well, longer. Than, I'm now. 15 or 20, I'm maybe now eleven. Gosh, yeah. 
Um, I'm about 10. Uh, so I have no reason to ask for more than $200. Sometimes we've had things to spend. Well, we had our, history, our hidden history project. We have the hidden history project and we would have used more and not had to beg the 250th for the six or $700 more we needed. And, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm just bringing that up in case you feel like we want to do more work on that or something. I don't know. I don't think I, we do. It's funny. I was just thinking, what would we do if, if you know, my Google Maps somehow fell apart? <laughs> you know? well, we may um, not want to visit that this year, but it's yeah, it's a, it's a yeah. thing of ours that's, you know, that, a life that, need, that needs support. And, and um once or twice I bought a book of stamps and I keep it and only use them for historical commission use. And I have not run out of stamps yet. So I'm, but I, I, my, does, I guess my question is whether anyone thinks we should ask for more money. And if so, what the rationale would be. I'd be interested to know what you've spent money on in the past, Alan. Very little, we bought signs with that money. Um, oh yeah. That was about that was the main thing over over time. Otherwise, it was mainly stationary and actually anything by stationary stamps maybe a few times. That was about it. We paid the, the cost uh, are pretty minimal. We paid the student. A, oh, the stone wall. Yeah, right. the, the, um, uh, we contributed the year that we had the town safe evaluated. We contributed our entire budget and asked. Um, I don't remember what she, it was basically her costs to come from Essex uh, where she works. Um, we asked the CPC if we could have some of their administrative budget to round it out and they said, yes. Um, I don't remember anything else. I remember sitting in Susan's kitchen or dining room once and sealing a lot of letters, but I don't, stamping them, but I don't know. I don't remember what we were writing about. What, so it's it's kind of, We've spent it mostly on the kind of things that we would probably just pay for ourselves if we didn't have the budget. <laughs> you know? Well, if we had something that needed funding and we didn't have, it was more right. than $200, what's the process for getting money? Because I feel like we can't ask for more in our budget unless we know what we're going to do with it. Right. Um, but if there's something we want to do or we stopped because we don't have yeah, don't have us. Um, well, we certainly wouldn't want to go to a special town meeting for another hundred dollars. <laughs> no. I don't know the answer to that. I guess. Well, everything I can think that we move. Go ahead, Judy. Well, I everything I can think of that ideally one would like to do involves a lot more money than we would be right. likely to get in a budget, you know, the sort right. of thing for which we need a grant or CPA money. Right, um, right. That, and that's exactly what I was thinking, that to go through the drama of asking to go from 200 to 225 or 250 just seems <laughs> pointless. To right. me. And I think this is true for, I think it is true for many of the town's committees that the budget stays flat unless they have had a kind of uh, chronic, overrun i don't know what is what happens with the planning board Do planning you know? board's budget <laughs> is mostly for public hearing legal ads and they got so expensive that we've had to put the fees back to the applicants unless it's a town thing like a bylaw change but but legal mm -hmm. the legal ads are just prohibitive mm -hmm. The small things. Oh, and we, we do have get... a secretary, and I don't think the secretary has had a raise forever, but she's also very poor about getting reimbursed and doing things on time. So <laughs> your your secretary doesn't get That's the same cost here. of she doesn't get the cost of living adjustment that other town employees get. She's not a town employee. She's she's, she's more a like contract a contract employee. Yeah, I can't. I I I I honestly can't think of it because we don't have any assets, <laughs> you know. I mean, that need to be. Uh, we have a filing cabinet that is sitting in the in the former vault, 
in the town hall. And that is the historical commission's only tangible asset. Um, maybe all we've ever had, so. Yeah. Yeah. The only other kind I of think, thing I, I can think, think this of. is not a good idea to add to the burden on the town budget. I think it's going to be pretty painful. No, it's just interesting to talk about, I think. You yeah. know, I, I, yeah. that's a good idea. What were you going to say, Allison? The only other kind of thing I can think of is if we ever teamed up with the Historical Society, for example, on some project that they cook up, like excavating the fort site, you know, in Donna's front yard or. Uh, surveying the crafts kiln site, you know, down in Claverack Road, or I don't know, you know, that kind of thing that might happen. But the pace of that is so slow that we would probably have time in the planning process to think about not next year's, but the year after's budget for that. Yeah, well, I think that would, both of those would probably be CPA funded anyway. Okay. Yeah, we could. We I'm just could. trying to imagine what we might get yeah. involved in. No, it, it's interesting. I, I mean, I don't. Did any of the rest of you read the article about the project in Leverett on the history of mills in Leverett? Oh. Uh, I was so. very. I, I. I. I am very much not looking for another project right now, <laughs> but <laughs> I was interested that it was their historical commission that did that. In fact, I read it all through, having kind of thought historical society, even though that's what it said, because um, that project must have cost some money. Um, and it sounded very interesting. You can imagine situations where we might decide to get involved in something like that. For example, if a piece of property was going to be demolished or significantly changed and we wanted to do something to capture mm -hmm. the history of the place, we, as a entity might get involved in that kind of thing, but there's nothing on our plate like that right now. Right. And and even in situations such as the one we just had when Teresa Belisle wrote to Judy to ask about the barn demolition. Mm -hmm. And then Allison and I went and took a lot of photographs and uh, and the barn is and Teresa has been sent a, a very, very nice note back about that. We're going to park it in the historical society because you know we have no place to park something like that the file of the photographs um and and of course now we also have the ones we took of hillside dairy uh, you know the uh, bicentennial of the of, well uh, uh, no not the the not the bicentennial the american revolution anniversary is coming around and the 250th of it that's word you want to hear again, Susan, huh? <laughs> Can I hide under my desk? <laughs> for a moment? You know, and I expect there are a lot of, there'll be activity we see from other towns and certainly in Massachusetts that, that involves recognizing that or reinterpreting that story or exploring that story that we could get involved in if we wanted to. Donna's like, no. Because <laughs> I, I, I like I like events so much. <laughs> oh no, um, you know it could be a research kind of thing that that's in coordination with that. One thing, um, yes, in many towns don't have a functioning historical society, and I think more weight falls on the commission. So, you know, talking partnering with the historical society makes something. It, it, in many ways it gives us leverage to think more broadly we also think it it kind of we share the responsibility we don't have to bear the whole load i know leverage has its it has one of its big anniversaries coming up because i've talked to the lady um, i don't know whether it's 250 or they they get the they get the cake after deerfield i guess right um, I've, I've had some conversations with them Yes, I just saw the cake. Was I going up to Atlas Farms? Did I pass it on the way to Atlas Farms, perhaps? Yeah. Oh, Jewfield has one now, so. Yeah, it's, it's right it. near Skims. Yes, yes. Um, Which means it's not in our town anymore, and that's no, all. No, Leverett, Leverett's was founded in 1774. 
So they must yeah. be coming up on that date. Yeah. yeah, they're coming up. So I, my guess is this mill thing was a sort of a preparatory mm -hmm. education kind of thing related to that. Their version of hidden history. Well, I was <laughs> I, I, I was just uh, reading about a carding mill in Leverett and a brandy distillery in 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 Leverett. So they do have that kind of history there. Well, they have a lot of water, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yes. So, okay. So, two hundred dollars. Is that our consensus? We just say thanks. Why not? We'll spend it wildly, wisely. Um, but also, this is to remind everyone that the the town year ends on June thirtieth, and we have not spent a dollar of this year's budget. So, um, you know, if, if so there we can is think of four hundred dollar projects and run it over two years. <laughs> We could. We, we could, we could, we could, or I could just buy some more stamps. Yeah. <laughs> For all something. the years we haven't spent the 200, we would be rich if we could bank it. You know, it's interesting. I mean, I, any any institution is like this, but um, the town budget, of course, has a whole lot of little lines that never go up and that, you know, that's a cushion. Um, that's not a bad thing. So, um, so thank you, um, Judy, thank you for sending all that, um, that information about how to start thinking about, I'm switching to national, uh, historic <laughs> districts, sorry, <laughs> subject heading national historic districts. We had talked in the past in very general terms about North Street and, um, and I have gotten more interested in uh, Canterbury, <laughs> the first neighborhood in um, Waitley, both because it was the first neighborhood in Waitley and because uh, because of the um, gap that we've that we've noted before of having none of East Waitley um, in an historic register in an historic district. So I guess um, I'm, I'm wondering if, if it would make sense for us all to look at the information Judy um, sent and have a conversation. Well, there, is a, there is a Canterbury area form. There's an area. Yes, I know there is an area. And, and you always start right. with an area form. Right, right. So, and there but is, there isn't one for North Street. But there isn't one for, and does everybody understand an area is a state designation that precedes the national, the, any possibility of a national designation. Yep. So there is nothing for North Street, except is Quan Quan. Well, there, 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 are, there are individual houses. There are individual are houses and Quan Quan has an area form for it, for all of its buildings. Right, right. But right. there's not a, like to be on the a neighborhood. Yeah. Area form. Yeah. And if I were, I were thinking about it, I think I might start with the National Heritage Landscape area and build around that. Well, it's something, something of a coincidence that Donna and I are working on that Roaring Brook project, which is taking us down some historic paths that have to do with. The very end of North Street and history there, which is interesting. So um, you will be interested to hear the rest of you. I'm going to guess you didn't know this either. That Allison has discovered that four, or is it now at five separate times over history, the trustees of reservation uh, identified Quan Quan. Uh, sorry, not Quan Quan. Identified Roaring Brook, Waitley Glen, Waitley, Waitley Glen, actually more specifically, as a, a high priority area to be conserved. Between several the, times, yeah, it's hard between, to count what's a long-standing wish and what's a new revived right, wish. Right, right, but, but it for recurs, decades and decades. Right, it's a, it's. I think it's between the 1890s and the 1930s. Does that yep. sound? Yep, that's about right. I, it's uh, it's one of the trustees the, and the Appalachian Mountain Club became it's interesting. It was and, well, it's all the same gang of people. Right, right. Interesting bit of Waitley history. Why that um, lay fallow? Yeah. Well, they, they Waitley Glen was included on a list that 
that also included places like Petticoat Hill and Mount Toby and other places you would recognize as now having been uh, preserved by various entities, but Waitley Glen never happened. And we don't, we don't really have an answer why, except that the town didn't step up in so or no individual ever stepped up to do that. Yeah, most of those things need an advocate, you know? Yeah. Um, There's a place called Holland Glen in Pelham. Does anybody know that place? Yeah. Um, it was a, a piece of, uh, I don't think it was old growth forest at the time. This is the turn of the last century, um, but it, it a lot was in private hands. But it was also like Whitley Glen, kind of a neighborhood place where people would go, you know, on an outing. Um, and then and then the threat of logging came along and uh, the town people got quite upset about the thought of losing that. And so the entity that stepped up to preserve Holland Glen, and it is preserved now, was the local historical society. They uh, they decided that preserving that forest was a historic element and that they they are the ones that raised the money to preserve that property. Interesting. Yeah, it is kind of interesting. So, um, Judy, I'm sorry, I think I interrupted you while you were starting to say what you suggest a sort of sequence of actions or topics. Oh, no, I, I don't think you, you don't start by aiming to, you may hope for a national register district, but you really want to get your act together by defining an area district and what makes it an, a, a cohesive area hmm. and why it should exist, where it starts, where it stops. Does that mean whether and, it's whether it's kind of held together by an agricultural history or an industrial history? Yeah. Like, a geographic line around a neighborhood. Or, or an architectural style in some cases. Mm -hmm. Or, or a quality of architecture, if, even if the style isn't consistent. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, it, it, yeah, it it should tell a story. Right, I see. right. It could be a mill district. It could be an agricultural district. It could be, you know, Waitley Center is is a a town district. You know, it has municipal offices and close together houses and. And the West Waitley district has a very area rather has a very different character. Yeah. And right. a different history. Right. Right. So that's why I thought if given that that this North Street has this scenic historic landscape that's been recognized as mm -hmm. an agricultural area and you know history of of farming back forever. Um, that would seem to me a place to start thinking anyway. That might, might not be where you wind up, but. It, and it, it also has, um, uh, you said something about, you know, where the boundaries are. It seems to me it has quite clear boundaries. <laughs> you know? I mean, goes from the Dingle to an Asami farm and that, oh no, sorry, it actually would go to Hillside Hillside Dairy, wouldn't it? Yeah, and Baronis is, you know, actually originally owned all of, all into Deerfield. Right. But yeah, you probably stop it at Hillside now. The town line is just behind the beyond the campground, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Well, that makes sense to me. Does, do other people think that would be a good thing to start talking about? Do we need money in the budget for that? I don't know. I don't know. Someday. Yeah, someday. To file some applications, maybe. I don't, I don't well, know. it depends I mean, if we're if we're developing the history, or if we're hiring somebody to do it. Right, right, right. I mean, I mean, there filing is applications doesn't. You know, anybody can write an area form. I, 
I do it all the time. Right, you right, do. right. Not everybody all, can. Right. <laughs> although, although. Um, no, I mean, you don't, it doesn't take a lot of training. But it takes um, uh, a very specific set of requirements for the photographic support material, which you meet because you have a you have that kind of printer in your house, but you know. Actually, um, Peter Stott told me last time that as long as I'm submitting it on a disc, I needn't worry so much about the archival pho photographs, so. In other words, yeah. he's, he's being, this is the director, he's being more flexible than their formal directions indicate. Now, that makes, that's great <laughs> because the, the guidelines yeah. were written I don't know when they were written before digital existed. Funny, it's it's like, I, I made some comment about, you know, it's such a pain to do all those photographs. And and he said, oh, don't worry about it, Judy. If As long as we have the disc, we can recreate the photographs. I, so I think it's a... Uh, there must have been a time when those things were being reviewed by people sitting in a room, flipping through pieces of paper. Well, even... even Six years ago, seven, Alan and I sat <laughs> at my kitchen table and made photo album, duplicate photo albums labeled every single photograph of all Alan's photographs of the deteriorating town hall because they required two sets of them. It would, do you remember that? It was yeah. really, Somewhat, no, yeah. like we were there for a while. <laughs> So they have, that's great if they've gotten beyond that. Um, but it's a good question that maybe we should think about. Um, I, I, th I think Judy's right that what's required is more our attention at this point than anything else. Um, but let's, shall we, shall we talk about that? Try to talk about North Street in January, Would that makes sense. Sure. Of course, we'll be talking about the library as well. Okay, um, will you, I wanna go back to the library. Um, could I ask that you, each of you, if you have questions um, to send to the library, let's see, it's Monday afternoon. Could you send them to me by Thursday and I'll send them, send it off to Jim and Bob before, before the holiday. That would be great. Sure. Um, our next meeting is, as Judy said, on Martin Luther King Jr. Day, the 16th of January. If any of these holidays begin to be problems for anybody, you should say so. <laughs> no. um, and I guess that's it, huh? All right, good. Thanks, so. Well, Happy whatever. Holidays, everyone. Yeah, yes. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays.